I'm doing this video series because there is a 19.1 version of Apex now. I have a complete video series for Oracle Apex 18.1 and the current series will use Apex 19.1 and will follow in parallel with the same steps in the 18.1 series. So I have for software this time XE 11.2, Apex 19.1, SQL Developer 19.1. I will not walk through the steps of installing XE and upgrading to Apex 19.1. You can look at the previous video series and this particular video, Apex 00 of 30, if you want a demonstration of how to install XE and upgrade Apex. The steps of going from Apex 18.1 to 19.1 are the same. So if you want to work along, you can download and install Oracle Oracle XE 11.2, or you can use the most current version, which I do not have installed. You can download Oracle Apex 19.1 and go through the steps of upgrading to that. The one other thing that I have is I have also installed a translated version of Apex for Spanish. So if you're interested in that, you can go to the documentation. It's pretty simple to follow and pretty easy to do. But it's not quite as simple as I've seen on a few posts online. It's not just a matter of selecting a different language. You do have to install a set of support files, images, and other things that will provide the translated version of Apex. Once you've done that, then when you log in and go to, in my case, the local install of Oracle Apex, I can pick between Spanish and English. So if I look at my version of the database, as I told you, if I run this, then I can see that I do have 11.2 installed. I can go to SQL Developer Help About and see that I'm working with version 19.1. So let's get started. In this video, we're going to do a few things to clean up loose ends from previous videos. I need I think to correct the target property on a create button in the list of animals report, we'll check that and see if I'm right about that. I need to create a form for the dominant breed lookup table. I did a form for the status lookup table, but now I need to make sure I've got one for the dominant breed. Then the main part of the video will look at how to change the layout of page items in a form. So I'm going to log in to Apex as a developer. So I'm logging in as the developer. And I'm going to go to the application and run the application. So for the report list of animals, if I edit, then that opens page 5. Let's go back to the report. But when I do a create, which this is on the report page, which is page 2, I'm going to page 3. But this is not what page 3 used to be. This is the wrong page. So I need to go back to my report and edit this create button. So I'll go to edit the page. And then here's the button on the left-hand side. So I select that. And I go to the behavior. And I want to go to the target. And I need to change that to 5. And there's nothing here that I need to set because I'm opening up the form as a blank form. But I should also clear the cache, not for page 3, but for page 5. And click OK. And let's save that, run that, and see if that works for us. So rather than going to a form that shows existing data, I want to go to a blank version of the form. 
and I know this is the right form because it has all the static and dynamic LOBs that we created in a previous video. Okay, so we've made that change. Now I want to go to the application and I want to create a page for the for the lookup table for dominant breeds. So I'll do form, report with form. I'll let Apex number it. Your numbers probably are different. So I've named my report page and my form page. I'll click next. And I do want to go ahead and create a navigation item. And I'll select the dominant breed lookup. I'll accept the default for both the report and the form. And I need to select dominant breed ID as the primary key. So I can save that, run that, and I see the list of dominant breeds. And if I want to edit one, I click here, cancel. If I want to create one, it would open it up so I could add a new one. And I'll go ahead and add American Blue Healer. So now let's come back to list of animals and look at the form and change this layout. Now Apex, by the way, is a responsive development environment that detects the device being used to look at the application so the display can be modified to accommodate a better display for a tablet or a phone. But I do want to change this layout and not have such wide columns for such short data items. So I'm going to turn this into a two column page. I'll edit the page down here from the designer bar. And we've got page ID. Then if we scroll down, we see what we see on layout is start new row, yes. I don't want to change that for animal ID. Now notice when I make the change for category, what happens here in this middle layout section. I will click category, and then I will scroll down to layout and say start new row, no. So now I see these two columns from the table displayed side by side in the form. I'm going to save that and take a quick look at the form. So we see this here. I'll show you one other thing that I'm not actually going to use, but just so you know it's here. We have column span. So Apex is looking at any display screen in 12 units, not 12 inches, but 12 units. So if you wanted to click on something and change its width, you could come down to column span and say that of those 12, which right now it would be 6 and 6 for these two, I could set this to 4, save that, and run that, and we see the change in the width. I can leave that one, I guess, as is, but I will pause the video, and for every other item, like on mix and name, I'm going to say start new row, no. You should do that to follow along. So now I have two fields on each row. I can save that and run that just to check on the visual display. The other thing I'd like to do here is uh, date created and date modified. Those are what we call audit columns. In fact, we might want to not display those. They automatically populate with date and time, one when the row is created, and two when data is modified in a row. But I want to move those to the end right now. I want to display them but not have them mixed in with data that we would enter. We should not be entering this. For now, I leave these in the form, but I want to change the position so they're not mixed in with data fields that we do enter. So I'm going to select date created, or date created on the left, I should say. And I'm going to change the sequence to some higher number that will force it to the bottom of the list. So I'm just going to arbitrarily pick 200 and move out of that field. And we'll see that it has moved it down to the last row. Then I'll do date modified, and I'll make that 210.
So now I see date created and date modified, but the logic or the order in which I was doing start new row no doesn't apply now because of those changes. I want to click on date created on the left and show on the layout start new row yes and then on date modified start new row no save that and look at what I have in the pages that's it for this video I'll see you in the next one